Okay, so this video is going to show you how to get access to Stata through AppStream. And as I've said to you previously, AppStream is the university's sort of virtual online computer laboratory where you can access a whole lot of software, including Stata, that the university has licenses to. Um, and you access it not by downloading the program onto your own computer, but accessing it through a web browser. So all you need is access to the internet and a web browser. Um, I'm using Firefox here, but you can use Chrome um, or any of the other web browsers as well. Um, and you can access any of the software, including Stata, that university has licenses for. So what you do when you open up your new browser, you type in mq.octa.com, O-K-T-A.com. And that's going to get you to sign in with your student ID in your case and your one ID password. So your one ID and your password. And then that'll bring you to this screen. So this screen for you might look a little bit different to me. You might have fewer little icons on it because I've got staff account and you are accessing the student account. But the only one that is relevant for what we're talking about here is this icon here that is a blue and black square that says AppStream student applications. So click on that one. Then it brings you to this screen here, and this is all the different software that you can access through AppStream. And the one that is relevant for us is this one down here with the 16 icon, that is Stata 16, Stata IC 16. So click on that. If you get this thing that um, is asking you to allow notifications, just say yes to allow notifications. Sometimes when you're in the program, it has windows that pop up that are still part of the program, but browser thinks that it's notification so that's why we said yes to that and then you just need to wait very patiently for this thing to tick along until you get to the end of the percentage countdown thing and through the magic of technology we'll get there in one second okay getting there and now it prompts you to log in with your one ID password again. So this is the same password that you entered in previously. It's the password that goes along with your student ID. Waiting, waiting, waiting again. It's just building the anticipation. So excited to get access to a new software. Can't wait to do something in stats using Stata. I know you're all so excited sitting here waiting for this. Just building the anticipation. Screen black, but that's okay. And now here we go. All right, so this is our Stata interface. So this is the computer program Stata that we're accessing through a web browser. Um, so if you want to access Stata through AppStream, doing what we just did, then that's what you need to do throughout the rest of the unit. So anytime you want to use Stata, you need to log in through that MQ Okta website, log in with your one ID and go into AppStream and go into Stata. So now what we have is a computer program sitting within our web browser. So we're still within the web browser. We're still within Firefox here. Um, we're just accessing this computer program through the browser. First thing you might see is this kind of very red and alarming looking text that came up. Completely ignore that, that's okay. So every time Stata updates, um, every time Stata opens, it looks for new updates. Um, and when it's using, uh, when you're using Stata through AppStream, it just gets a little bit confused. So that's what this is referring to. So just feel free to ignore that. It's absolutely not a problem at all. All right, so now I'm just going to walk you through the Stata interface to familiarize you with what it is that we're looking at here. So what you can see is we've kind of got the Stata window within our web browser, our Firefox window. You can full screen the Stata window using these, this kind of two double headed arrows thing. So if you click, hover your mouse over that, it says enter full screen mode. So if you click that, you'll then full screen app stream. Every time you move your window around, it does that kind of resizing thing. And now you can just see it's a little bit bigger, so it's taking up the entirety of my computer screen. And if you want to bring back those icons, then you just need to hover your mouse at the top of the screen. Okay, so this is Stata version 16. Every few years, Stata updates and gets a new version. If you're using an older version of Stata or you're looking at, say, a video or um, a book or something that it has references to an older version, that's absolutely okay. Just like all programs, 
usually quite small things change from, from um, update to update. So please don't worry if you're looking at any kind of resources that's looking at version 15 or 14 or anything earlier than that. Um, things will look a little bit differently probably, but it's still the general gist is the same. Okay, so this middle box here, the biggest box that's taking up the most amount of screen space, this is our viewer window. And the viewer window is where the results of anything will be displayed. So if I ask Stata to produce a table, if I ask it to do some summaries, if I ask it to um, run any kind of statistical tests, that's going to come up in um, this main window here. We've also got a few different panels around the outsides on the left and the right side here. The left hand side here, this is our history window and the history window is going to show, we haven't done anything yet, but whenever we do run some commands, the history window will um, show a history, like a log, kind of a historical um, record, if you will, of any of the commands that we've previously run. You'll see them listed sequentially um, in this panel on the left hand side. Over on the right hand side up the top, we have a variables window and this is going to list all of the different variables in the data set that would be open if we had a data set open. We don't have one open at the moment, which is why there's nothing that's being displayed here. So if we do and when we do have a data set open, you'll see the different variables listed up the top there. And then down the bottom, we also have a properties window and the properties window gives us information, more specific information or more detailed information about the variables themselves. So when we have variables here, each variable will have some properties, kind of information about that variable, and that'll be displayed down the bottom here. You can also see up the top panel here, we have a whole lot of menus, just like any kind of computer program. So we have a file menu, an edit menu, a data menu, graphics, etc., etc. And then underneath we have a bunch of icons and these icons are just shortcuts. So just like in lots of other computer programs, they have those little tile icons that are shortcuts to doing things that you can do in the menu system. And then down the bottom, the very last kind of section of this, of this window is the command window. And the command window is where you can type in written commands and get Stata to do something. So if anybody is familiar with any kind of computer programming or any other um, program that has a syntax language, a kind of programming, written programming language, um, this is where you can type in status written commands and get it to run those commands just by hitting enter on your keyboard. Alternatively, we can also ask Stata to do things just by using the menu system. So the menu system is this graphical user interface where you can use the menu to click and ask it to run a bunch of different things, including graphs, including tables, including statistical tests, whatever it is that we want to do. Okay, what I want to draw your attention to now is the help menu. So the help menu is always relatively helpful, regardless of what program it is we're talking about. And if I click on the help menu here, the very first result is PDF documentation. So if I click on that, what will open up is a big PDF that is status user manual. And the user manual is there to help you if you get stuck um, in using the program at all. So it is a 270 page PDF um, and it basically has all the information that you'd need to know um, in order to access Stata or to run Stata or to run different commands, produce different commands. Most of this, 99% of this is much more advanced than what you will need for this particular unit. But for those of you that kind of like getting into the nuts and bolts of things, um, you might find this particular PDF quite useful. But if I get rid of that for now, Go back to Stata. So when you're using Stata on AppStream, um, one useful thing that you can do is to link in any kind of cloud, well not any cloud storage, two different versions of cloud storage um, that you might use, which is either OneDrive, Microsoft OneDrive or Google Drive. Um, there's some instructions on how to do that that's posted back on iLearn, um, the same place where you're looking at this the same place that you're looking at this lecture. Um, I'll put some the, the URL for the instructions on how to link in your cloud storage, either Google Drive or OneDrive up there. But once you've done that, if I exit full screen here, once you've done, or in order to do that, in order to actually link in your cloud storage in AppStream, if you click on this third icon on the right hand, on the top left hand corner, about third into the right, um, this one that's an open folder, click on that, it says my files. If you click on this button that says add storage, 
you can see my Google Drive is already there because I've already linked my Google Drive with AppStream. But if you click on this and then log into your Macquarie student Google Drive account, the benefit of doing that is that then when you're using Stata, you can access files, either open files from Google Drive or save files to Google Drive, um, which is a very useful thing if you want to open data files or open output files and save data files or output files. So for example, um, I've saved a data file into my Google Drive account. So if I click on the file menu and I go open, or alternatively, I can use a little shortcut, little yellow open um, folder icon, so I click on that. And if you look on the left hand side, you can see Google Drive is one of the folders that's giving me the options of navigating into. So if I click on Google Drive and I double click on my drive, then this now opens up everything that's in my Google Drive account. And if I scroll down to my data file, this is a data file that later in the lecture I'll show you how all of you can get access to this. But this is a data file, a Stata data file that I've saved into my Google Drive folder. So if I click on that and then click open, Then what you can see now is on the left hand panel, we actually have a list of variables. And if I click on one of these little um, sort of spreadsheet table looking things, and if you hover your mouse over any of these icons, it'll tell you what it is. So you can see this one here says data editor edit, and the next one says data editor browse. If I click on the browse version of it, what this does is open up a new window here, which basically kind of looks like a fancy Excel spreadsheet. And this is our data file. This is the data that we've opened in Stata that we are now looking at. So you can see here, it's basically just a spreadsheet. In the kind of main part of this window, we have some rows and some columns. Every column here is a variable and every row is a case. And what I mean by case means that it's an observation. In this case, it's one person's lot of data. So we have six rows here, six rows of data, which means that we have six people who we have information about. And we have four different variables in this spreadsheet, in this data file. We have an ID variable, which is just a numeric identification. We have a gender variable. And then we have two numeric variables, PSYU1105 and PSYU1104. And these are, think about these as the final marks, or these are six people's final marks for these two different units, for 1104 and 1105. So this is a spreadsheet, this is our data file. Each column in this spreadsheet is a variable. So as many columns as you have, that's as many variables as you have in your data file and every row is a case or an observation. And what that means here is that we have six rows, which means we have six people's worth of data. So person one is female, had a 63 in 1105 and a 56 in 1104. Person two is male, they had a 59 in 1105 and a 67 in 1104. Person three is female, they had a 78 in 1105 and an 81 in 1104 and et cetera, et cetera. So six rows here, six observations, and four different variables in our data file. So our data editor, our data editor browse window here, it's a separate window that's been opened up. So you can close this particular window. You can see it's a separate window because if I move it around, the previous one is behind there. If you close this, it's not actually going to exit out of the data, it's just closing the view that we're currently in. So if you click on the red X up the top to close, then that takes us back to the main view here. Okay. So we have some variables on the top right hand corner. If I click on any of these variables, I get some information about the variables down here. And if I click on either the data editor edit or the data editor browse icons, then that'll open up in a new window so I can actually see the data that is currently being opened in Stata.